Could it be that easy? Yes. Yes, it is. Hello, welcome back to part 20 of the Monza video. As you've seen from part 19, Sam sorted out the fuel tank, which is really, really good news. Um, over the past few days, Sam's been beavering away while he's been back at work. I won't explain what he's been up to, I'll let him sort of do that, but we are getting really, really close. So without further ado, I'll hand you straight over to Sam. Cheers, Sam. Still in lockdown. Um, however, I am back at work now, so that means I can really crack on with the Monza. Um, I've got a few things that turned up in the post which I'll show you now and it should hopefully let me put the fuel tank to bed and actually get it finished now and then I can fit it. So uh, I'll just show you what's arrived and I'll talk you through it. So these two things just here of what, what we've had delivered. First one's this little um, one way valve and that fits onto this pipe just here and it will go in line with this okay and all that does is allows fuel slash excess pressure to drain away down that line um, but doesn't let any muck get back in so i can fit that that's an original one uh, also i've got this line here it might look very luminous and sort of not period however um, I'll show you in a second the vac line that goes uh, from the distributor uh, through to the inlet side. When it was new, it was actually bright green and it just goes discoloured with age. So I will be fitting that at some stage. I might even do it tonight. Uh, easy job, but it makes a difference under the bonnet. And the last thing, hasn't actually been delivered. I've found these. Um, they're like little clips. That the fuel hose goes into and uh, I've actually stolen these off an old um, Manta tank that I've got lying around but it's the same clips so I can then push them onto the side just there and it'll make a nice neat job so I'm gonna hopefully finish the tank now I've just had to modify um, what I had on there slightly um, this one-way valve has got a thicker fitting on this side and a thinner thing on this side and you can always tell with a one-way valve uh, one easy way to tell is by blowing down one end and then the other so I've worked out that that is the direction of travel which it needs to be in um, so this thicker end is now the discharge line that's going to sit sort of down here so what I'm going to do is I've got another section of um, thinner hose that will fit onto the end of that and I'm gonna sort of run this down here and just sit it beside the tank. So I'll let you know what it looks like when it's done. Okay, all done. So we've got the big pipe on just there. We've set up um, the filler neck, hopefully at the right-ish angle. And uh, I've just sort of clipped on that one-way valve down here, kept it in place with a cable tie, and another clip down that end as well. So we should be good to go. We've got the car out. Don't know why there's a rag under there, I'll we'll find that out. And uh, I've got a glamorous assistant. And uh, yeah, we're gonna try and get it in. See how it goes. All right, as you can see, it's dark, which means we've had a bit of a fight. However, <laughs> there it is, it's in. We've got our sandblasted tank straps in there, looking nice. Um, probably scratched it a little bit getting it in but not too bad um, it was just a very tight fit um, and it involved a lot of wiggling and moving around um, and probably we started really winning when the tank straps went on um, and it sort of pulled itself into position we've got all the pipes on everything's in the right place um, it's good I've had to just cable tie a couple of the things out of the way. My little clips didn't work. There's just not space for them. But yeah, really good, really good news. So hopefully we're starting it soon. Exciting times today. 
hopefully, now the fuel tank's in, it should start. So, we're going to uh, keep a close eye on all the fuel lines we've had out. And, uh, well, we're going to see what happens. So, stay tuned. Okay, moment of truth. So, I'm going to turn it over. I've got someone watching from the front there. He's going to do the secret wave if anything goes wrong. And I'll knock it off nice and quickly. Um, it's got fuel. It's got a battery. Let's see what happens. Ready? Ready. Let's do it. Might take a while to draw the fuel through. Yeah. Give it another go. Lines, yeah, yeah. Going again. Hmm, nothing. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, little update. It's not started. If it was, I'd be showing you it running right now. So we've got a couple of problems that we've for, we've sort of found so far. Um, we've been running through things and testing things. Um, we've got a spark. That's ruled out. We know we've got a spark. We know we've double checked that the leads are in the right order. Uh, rotates clockwise. Um, and all the leads we've traced back. We know they're going to the right cylinders in the right order. The timing, we absolutely were so careful with that when it went together. So we're, we're happy with that. Um, fuel, however, we're getting no fuel up to the rail. We popped off the main feed down here and um, we, we're turning the engine over, no fuel was coming out. So I tried sucking some fuel through. I got a gob full of fuel. However, the pump is not pushing fuel through as it should be. So what we're thinking now is the fuel pump is doing something but not enough or it's just completely uh, wrapped. So that's where we are at the moment. It looks like um, a new fuel pump might be required. And uh, if we've got a new fuel pump, I'll change the filter again as well because I was running on that old crappy fuel. But that is where we are at the moment. So a little bit disappointing, but these things happen. Another day at the office, or well, night. Um, been told by a few people on the uh, on the forum that it may still not have enough fuel in to uh, to pick up. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to put another yet another 10 liters in. So it should bring me to about 25 liters. And then really I can sort of um, I don't know draw a line under that one and, and, and cross that one off. Um, so I know I've got a spark and I will know I've got enough fuel in very shortly and then I'm going to go through and try and prime the pump again see if I can get something up to the injector rail um, if I still can't get fuel to the injector rail there's a problem further back in the system down here somewhere either with the pump or a block filter or maybe a line's collapsed so I'm just going to have to trace my way back but this is an easy way of just um, seeing if it's just the the pump literally just can't get a, a pickup, so we'll find out very shortly. All right, fuel filled up. So one of the guys as well on the forum, and I keep talking about it, but it's quite handy, taught me an interesting trick where you take the um, elbow off just here, and inside the um, airflow meter, there's like a little flap. I don't know if you can see it, but if you reach inside there, you'll feel it. And uh, if you move it, I don't know if you can hear. Can you hear that? That's the fuel pump kicking in. You're basically tricking the engine into thinking it's running, so it'll, it'll run the fuel pump. If you don't do that, then you'll have to just turn the engine over and you'll flatten the battery, which is what I did last time. And it appears straight away we've got fuel up to the manifold. And I can tell because I've got fuel leaks everywhere, so I'm going to have to nip a few things up, it looks like. So... Uh, that's good, that's progress. All right, so I've nipped up on those, uh, a couple of fuel leaks, we just needed a tiny little bit of a pinch. Um, I've reprimed the, the uh, fuel pump using that little trick and there's no more leaks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it over and just see if we've got anything, if we've got any uh, sign of life at all. We should do, we've got a spark and I know we've got fuel now. So in reality, 
it should go as long as I've got everything timed up correctly. I've left the rocker cover just off for the minute, just in case anything goes spectacularly wrong. Um, let's see what happens. All right, a little bit nervous, not gonna lie. A lot of hard work has gone into this. I don't want something to go terribly wrong, but let's see if we've got anything. Okay. Still nothing. Now, I know I've got fuel, I know I've got a spark, and that's pointing to some other sort of problem. So, we will continue to investigate. A little bit of further investigation, I'll tell you my thoughts. Um, I've just barred the engine over with a ratchet um, so that number six is uh, on the rock. So that means we're, we're looking for valve overlap, the exhaust valve closing and the inlet valve opening. So using the rule of seven, that makes it that um, number one is at top dead centre on its uh, compression stroke. So this one should be about to fire. Now, if you... I've just put it back on now, but I've just flicked off the distributor and the rotor arm is pointing at this plug just here. So I think I might have had it out somehow. I don't know how I've managed it, but I'm going to get everything back on in the right order. The firing order is 153624. Um, and I mean, I don't know what else it can be. As far as I know, I've done everything right. Uh, we've done everything right. Uh, let's see. Could it be that easy? Could it be just somehow we've got the leads muddled around somehow? Let's find out. Yes. Yes, it is. That is good. All right, so she's running, as you probably heard from last time. We've left it a couple of days and uh, we've just dragged her out and started her. It's misfiring badly, so something's causing it to misfire, which we're gonna to have to try and get to the bottom of it. Um, thr throttle response is slow, and it's misfiring, as you'd expect. So, I mean, we're moving on, and we? We're diagnosing things as they go, and, uh, you know, we're making progress. Next thing, we've gotta find out what this misfire is. So, let's see what it is. We have a misfire. Burning off a little bit of residue oil that was on the uh, exhaust manifold. I think it's misfiring possibly on two, so we'll investigate further. Bit of a last minute update. I got bored and thought, do you know what? I'm going to swap these injectors around. I'm going to put the original injectors back on. I don't know if you can see down there, but that's what I've just been doing. Not very good for your back if you've got a bad back, just be warned. Um, here's the later senator injectors which I've been advised to take off and go back to the originals. So what I'm going to do is I've put everything back on, everything's back together, obviously minus brake master cylinder but shouldn't make much difference. Um, and I'm going to see if it runs any better. You heard it earlier, it was running very lumpy, it's probably missing on one or two cylinders. I've been told that the voltage that these later injectors require is uh, it, they, well they need a little bit more to operate correctly and the series one um, operates an earlier Bosch Eljectronic uh, fuel injection system which apparently runs on a slightly lower voltage so we're going to see if putting the old injectors back in makes any difference. All right, in original injector test run I would say so let's see what happens you can probably hear fairly well actually because I'm still in the garage. I have to be careful I don't gas myself out, but let's see what happens. Hmm. Probably here. 
does still sound like it's misfiring. Let's get um, let's get a couple of lights on. You can see what's going on in here. So all our gauges are working, which is great. You can see the battery's uh, charging just there, great. No temperature on the gauge, but I did see temperature on there earlier, so I know that works. Um, good oil pressure. Yeah. Definitely misfiring still. Um, and also the fuel gauge, you can see there's working as well, which is great. However, what's not good is this stubborn misfire, and I just, I'm not totally sure where to go next. I could even be putting back in bad injectors for all I know. I don't know that these are operating exactly how they should be. So we'll have to find out. Nice one. Cheers, Sam. Wow, it actually runs. That's that's brilliant. Um, of course it runs, you know. I mean, we're good engineers. Of course we are. But no, it's, it's, it's brilliant. Uh, thanks ever so much for everyone that's contributed so far. I'd never have guessed on that flap inside the air intake. That was a new one to me, but brilliant stuff. But it is lumpy. Um, it's not running right, so we're asking you guys, anyone come across this before? We'll obviously keep looking, and it's probably something really silly, but at this point in the build, we don't want to risk it. We don't want to damage it, especially as the amount of work we've done to the car over the past sort of eight months anyway. So, yeah, really good stuff. Thanks ever so much for everyone who's subscribed. Brilliant, unbelievable, over 600 subscribers, more stuff to come, new stuff, new series. Could be interesting. But, you know, happy days. Instagram, oddjobs123 and oddjobs on Facebook. Stay tuned, more to come. And hopefully we'll have this beast out on the road really, really soon. And we'll do a review on it. All right, see you later, Sam. Cheers, guys. Bye.